Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dams and Cloud. This week I want to talk about delegated mailboxes in Gmail. I want to tell you what they are, the recent increases in the number of concurrent users that can access a delegated mailbox, and then I'm going to give you a quick demo on how to set it up. So if you're interested, you know what to do, stay tuned. Okay, so this week I wanted to talk about delegated mailboxes. Google recently updated the number of users that can concurrently access a delegated mailbox and also um, the number of configured accounts. So I think I might cover that first just quickly uh, because that's quite short. So it used to be only 25 accounts could be set up on a delegated mailbox and they've now increased that to 40 concurrent users can access a delegated mailbox. Now that will depend on the amount of usage. If you've got one user that's maybe a script or something that's sort of accessing it automatically, that will reduce the number. Um, but it's around 40. Now you can have up to a thousand, which is quite a lot, um, a thousand users configured uh, for the mailbox, but that doesn't mean that a thousand people can access it at the same time. So as I said, the concurrent connections is 40. So that's the big change. And for a lot of companies, that is a big deal. And they use delegated mailboxes quite a lot. So the second piece, what are delegated mailboxes? A delegated mailbox is essentially a mailbox that is being, that, that you've given access to another user. So um, a common one might be the accounts mailbox. You might delegate that out to two or three or five or 10 people in the accounts team who can access that mailbox. Uh, another common one would be support or sales. Now, Google do um, caveat in their update that although you can configure up to a thousand people and you can have up to 40 concurrent connections, they still don't recommend it for very, very high volumes um, of email and traffic. But it is very useful for a lot of our customers uh, and it is something we get asked about quite a lot. And we also have been asked many, many times, can we have more than 25 people accessing the mailbox? So I'm going to do a quick demo of um, delegated mailboxes and then I'm also going to show you how you might set it up yourself uh, and give delegated access to your account. Uh, another example actually, just while I'm getting set up on this, uh, another example of how you might use it would be a PA. So someone who's, who's um, PAing for another person might have delegated access to their account. Th that and the sort of account sales um, info mailbox are the kind of common use cases. I'm in here in my uh, Finton Dams and Training, just zooming in here so you guys can see my Dams and Training uh, account. And we can see here, I've got my, my normal Gmail, but in the top right hand corner, I have a little drop down. Now, this is not to be confused by this one here, which is my, um, which is my uh, Chrome profiles, uh, and I'm gonna be covering that in another video uh, soon. And the, the, the Chrome profiles allows me to have uh, different profiles set up. It, it's in the one actually within my Gmail. And when I click on it, I have delegated access to any accounts that I've been uh, given access to. So in this case, I've got delegated access to Sandra Jones. I'm doing PA st uh, work for her. So when I click on Sandra Jones, it's gonna open up her mailbox in a new tab, okay? And I didn't need any username or password to log in because I have already been given authorization or delegated access. So now I'm in Sandra Jones' account. And um, you'll notice that the little waffle, I'm just gonna flick back here quickly, the little waffle that gives me access to my other applications like Calendar and Drive, I don't have that in Sandra Jones. Uh, Sandra Jones account because it's a delegated account. I only have access to her email. You can delegate some other um, elements of an account like sharing calendars and delegated um, contacts is the most common one. But I would only have access to her Gmail. And so what that means is I don't have the little waffle because I can't access her calendar or um, her Google Drive. Okay, so that, that's, that's important. And when I click on the drop down here, it's just uh, her account. So what this means is I can now read her email. So emails that have been sent to her, I can read those and I can respond if I want. And um, there's one from Johannes and Happy and I can respond to that. And I'm responding as Sandra Jones, okay? And again, if I compose an email exactly the same, I'm composing an email as her and sending it as her. So it allows someone else to manage an inbox. You can see how this again would be useful from a PA point of view, or indeed something like um, an accounts or info setup. Okay, so that is uh, delegated access. How would I set that up? What if 
Fintan wanted to, if I want to delegate access to Sandra's, how would I do that? So when I go into my settings, so this is me doing it as an end user, there are third party tools that allow admins to do this at scale. I'm not gonna get into that in this one. But if I go into my settings and then I go to accounts, I can actually add another account here and it says grant access to your account and in brackets it says allow other people to read and send email on your behalf. So when I add this I can add in Sandra's account here so she's Sandra at damsontraining.com. Next step and then send email to grant access and that will send an email to Sandra that all she has to do is click and accept that. Um, so now if we jump back into Sandra's account, because obviously I have delegated access to that, she has now received this email. I wouldn't actually be able to accept this from the delegated point of view. I'd have to be logged into her actual account and all she would have to do is accept that. So I do have her account open in the background. So I'm going to bring that in here now. And if I go to her inbox, we'll see that it's same email in there. And if I click accept, that's going to accept um, that, that uh, delegated mailbox. And now in Sandra's account, when she hits refresh, so at the moment it's not there. So when I hit refresh, it can take, Google do say up to 24 hours for stuff. That's their uh, get out of jail free card for something not working. Uh, it never takes 24 hours, usually takes a, a few minutes, but can sometimes take kind of 15 or 20 minutes depending on how busy the system is. So I might have to refresh a few times, but eventually my account is going to appear as delegated within Sandra's account as well. Okay, and there it is. Now Finton at Damson Training is now delegated to Sandra. And if I click on that, voila, I am into her account or pardon me, she is into mine even. <laughs> we both have access to each other's accounts now. Okay, so um, if you'd like to read more about this and the delegated access increases, Google have a recent update uh, on January 12th on this and it will give some more information uh, and also has links to some of uh, uh, Google's policies around limits uh, for actual sending of an email, which you do have to be careful with because you've got delegated access. If you've got you know dozens of people emailing out, you can obviously hit those limits m more easily uh, than if it's just one one person. And, and, and so if you want to read up on that, again, it's got that high volume thing that Google would recommend still a support ticketing system. For our support, for example, we use Zendesk. You know, for, so depending on your use case, you really need to uh, evaluate what makes sense. But really this is to have some, some sort of shared mailbox uh, is how people often use the delegated access. So that's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this update. Uh, let us know if you use delegated access yourself, if you find it useful and if you're happy about these changes or increases that Google have made recently. And I will chat to you guys next week.